The United States dollar is on the attack. And if that attack is successful, it has biblically prophetic implications. All right, folks, let's get into this one. I have to tell you, this deals with the organization that we all know as BRICS. And folks, the information coming out of them is significant. It involves a direct attack on the United States dollar. And folks, I'm telling you this right now. If they are successful in removing the United States dollar the way that they want to do so, it will create a cashless world. All dollars will fail if that happens. And if it does, we are looking at some biblically relevant precedence that is being established here, we may be looking at the pathway to Revelation 13. It's some pretty big stuff, so let's get right into it. First, I want to start by reminding you what BRICS is. Some of you, well, most of you probably already know, but some of you that may not know, just in case, I want to just reiterate to you what BRICS is. They are an intergovernmental organization And they are made up of these nations. Now, the reason why they were called BRICS is because the original nations that comprised that organization was Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Thus, that's where we get BRICS from. But since that time, we have other nations that have joined. So it's not just uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South America. It's also Iran, Egypt. Ethiopia, and of course, the United Arab Emirates, which by the way, the United Arab Emirates being a part of BRICS is a pretty remarkable development, and there's a lot to that, and of course, that may bring into the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, although I doubt that that will happen just because of OPEC and OPEC Plus and so on and so forth, but I do want to simply say this, I want to say that what they are gunning for right now is really, really significant. So let's get into this. I'm going to put it together for you biblically. Let me read the article. This is in Breitbart, and so we know it's going to be pretty solid information. It said, BRICS Summit begins with goal of ditching U.S. dollar. Folks, I'm not joking. That's what this article actually says. Let me read it to you. The foreign ministers of BRICS member nations and another 13 countries interested in collaborating with the the anti-Western bloc convened in Russia on Monday for a meeting outside of the confines of the BRICS annual summit to discuss, among other issues, ways to expand trade without the use of the U.S. dollar. Now, this is a pretty big deal, folks, that they're meeting in Russia. And, you know, as we're going to find out, there are some very specific reasons why it is happening in Russia and sort of outside of what the established standard is. We should also note that Russia is the prominent force when it comes to all of these member nations and for lots of different reasons, specifically and more importantly, because of the energy implications and the power of being able to fight against the existence of the petrodollar. But we'll get into that in a second. Look what it says here. It goes on to say the proactive work is underway on fulfillment of decisions of the Johannesburg summit of the last year, specifically as regards uh, improvement of the international monetary system and development of a platform for payment in national currencies in mutual trade. By the way, this is the Russian foreign minister saying this, Sergei Lavrov. And uh, Sergei Lavrov is a massive player involved in all of this. And we've talked about him on multiple occasions and have done multiple videos talking about his role in a lot of this. But it goes on to say this. It says, BRICS held its last annual summit in August in Johannesburg, South Africa, as that nation held the presidency of the organization In 2023, Russian strongman Vladimir Putin chose not to attend on that occasion as South Africa is a party to the International Criminal Courts, uh, which has an outstanding warrant for Putin on charges of war crimes in Ukraine. Russia holds this year's presidency and will host the official summit in the city of Kazan in October. I want to just simply say this, the hypocrisy with the ICC, I don't respect them. I don't think that they should be respected on a whole bunch of levels because they've chosen to show their ugly and hypocritical face in ways that we never thought that they could, but they are doing it. And of course, things are getting worse, but that's kind of beside the point, a little bit of a side commentary on that. It goes on to say the vast majority of international trade is conducted using the U.S. dollar, bolstering the strength of the American currency and leaving nations open to potential sanctions damage. Giving the growing number of sanctions imposed on Russia and China is response 
to a litany of human rights abuses committed by their dictatorships. Both countries have spearheaded efforts, both in BRICS and beyond, to de-dollarize their economies, ideally rendering them immune from sanctions. Okay, so let me just offer some commentary here on this portion of the article because there are a lot of people taking this sort of a biased side of Ukraine in what's happened with Russia, Ukraine. But one of the things that I want to point out here that's really important was that Russia was forced into Ukraine. Now, with respect to human rights violations, look, I, I'm not so sure that I'm seeing a lot of that. I think there's more of those violations being committed by the United States making all of this happen, but that's a whole other story. And I'm not here to defend Russia. What I am simply saying is that the United States created this ugly mess. And of course, for those of you that might not have seen it, I would encourage you to look at the interview that I did yesterday um, or the interview actually that uh, uh, that was done by Tucker Carlson and that I actually went over. It's a really, really powerful interview that speaks very, very heavily of all of the things that involve Russia and what's taken place in that situation. And it's very eye-opening with respect to the fact that United States diplomacy is completely dead. So with that said, let's continue on. But when we do continue on, I want to give you just one very important caveat, and that is the fact that what we're seeing right now with the U.S. dollar being in grave danger of being de delegitimized in many of these countries is a scenario the United States of America has created for itself. There's a lot to be said about that, but I just want everybody to know that's kind of where we're at with this. So it goes on to say this. It says, de-dollarization was a major topic of discussion at the 2023 BRICS summit in the short term by replacing the dollar with the Chinese yuan or the Russian ruble, which by the way, we've talked about this on many occasions before, uh, especially when uh, the 2023 meeting took place. We did a lot of coverage on it. We talked about the implications of that potentially happening and how likely it could happen as long as a few conditions were met and those conditions appear to be very rapidly moving in that direction. So the article goes on to say, in the long term, however, BRICS representatives have suggested that the member nations of that coalition could create their own currency to protect its members from sanctions or any human rights requirements Western nations may demand. And by the way, the idea that that could possibly happen is a very real idea, and the idea that it could work is a very real idea. But one thing that they're talking about in order to make it viable is to make it an actual digital currency, believe it or not. They're not looking at talking about making it some kind of a uh, paper currency that's uh, not gold-backed. Obviously, no currency today is going to really be completely gold-backed. So we're going into this sort of fiat currency world, but they are looking to make this a digital currency currency that cannot be subject to the type of sanctioning that is oftentimes uh, have they've been subject to. And so they're looking to do a, a reversal in, in the um, uh, vulnerabilities, as they would call it, that they've been having. Folks, look at what the Brazilian president said about this. I'm going to read a quote from him. And many of you already know this. He's a socialist, uh, uh, not, the, uh, not the nicest guy in the world. But let me read the quote here. This is President Da Silva, by the way. Uh, and he says this. He says, why can't an institution like the BRICS Bank have a currency to finance trade relations between Brazil and China, between Brazil and all the other BRICS countries. He goes on to say, who decided that the dollar was the currency for trade after the end of the gold parity? See, this is the thing that I just think is such a crack up, folks. For those of you, by the way, that might not know, the U.S. dollar became, in essence, the petrodollar because of the fact that it was backed by uh, gold, okay? Its currency was backed by gold. And of course, that ended with the um, introduction of a new policy during the Nixon administration. And that's when the US dollar became a fiat currency. And no one ever thought that that would be really concerning. Uh, no one was ever really worried about it because the strength of the US dollar was uh, basically was unthinkable that it could fail on any level because of the condition of the nation, the GDP, so on and so forth. But it has happened and we're getting to the point where it's getting worse because of all the debt we're taking on and all of this uh, nonsense, the money printing and all that stuff. The article goes on to say, Brazil has independently sought to limit its trade in dollars, reaching an agreement with China to use Dewan for bilateral trade in March of 2023. Emphasizing BRICS disregard for human rights norms, the meeting on Monday opened with a moment of silence for late Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi and Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullayan, who would have attended the summit. It's just so 
ridiculous, folks. I mean, it's so ridiculous, the kind of evil that we see represented all over the world. I look at this, by the way, I look at what's going on with BRICS. They're not good people. I mean, they're, they're just not. But to see the kind of things that they stand for and what they want to do. But here's the bad part. The United States of America is doing some pretty evil things, too. It's just it's just absolutely kind of crazy, but it gives you an idea of exactly what's happening. The article goes on to say Lavrov, the Russian top diplomat, then offered remarks aggressively condemning Western nations, ensuring the meeting's tenure was combative against America and its allies. Look at what Lavrov says. He says, recent international events have taken off the masks of those who until now had verbally claimed almost the exclusive right to define so-called universal values under the guise of a rule-based order. And he's right. Like, like Lavrov's not wrong saying that. The United States of America is in a very, very dark place because although we claim to stand up for truth and justice and righteousness, we've done some pretty untruthful, unjust, and pretty unrighteous things. So it kind of takes away from our credibility standing as the moral police when in reality we're completely behaving in a very immoral way. But this comes right back to the whole world that we are approaching of Revelation 13, and we are definitely moving in that direction. Folks, let me just explain this. The folks at BRICS are very, very, very serious about what they are doing. They want to, and make no mistake about this, they want to eliminate the United States of America and certainly would, would want to eliminate the power of the United States of America to wield any buying potential, okay? This is really, really important that we look at it and we understand it for what it is. All right, so I have to read this article to you folks because this is really an important part of the discussion overall that we're having. The title of the article is this, Russia's oil and gas revenues surged by 73.5% in January through May. Now understand this, this is an article coming out of Zero Hedge and it's dated June 10th, 2024. So this is very, very current. Look at what it says. It says Russia's budget revenues from oil and gas soared by 73.5% in January through May of 2024 compared to the first five months of 2023, according to data from Russia's finance ministry released on Monday. By the way, a lot of people might argue that this data is skewed because it's coming out of Russia, but here's the thing, it's very, very easy to verify, and actually, we may be seeing numbers a lot higher than what they're actually giving us, and it's a very distinct possibility that some of the truth of how inflated these numbers really are may actually be hidden because of Russia's uh, trade interests. No joke, folks, like absolutely no joke. This is very real, and it's a very, very accurate picture of what's happening. Let me read this. It says, between January and May 2024, the revenues for Russian federal budget from oil and gas hit $55.7 billion, which in essence is 4.95 trillion Russian rubles. So that's a lot of money per the data reported by Russia news agency. By the way, this is tasks that we're talking about. They do this a lot. They, they provide information like this. Of course, they're going to provide information that Putin tells them to, to, to bring in. It goes on to say this. Here's the quote from TASS. It says, in line with parameters of the socioeconomic outlook, a steady surplus of oil and gas revenues above their base level is also expected in months to come. So in other words, it's just going to increase uh, exponentially. It says non-oil and gas revenues also rose by 34% in January through May 2024 compared to the same period last year, which by the way, I'm going to tell you this right now, I would absolutely expect other revenues to grow because when re energy ev revenues grow, you should expect to see other things oftentimes listed in the typical index for the GDPs to actually grow and grow and grow. It should not be a surprise. The article goes on to say Russian oil revenues have been rising in recent months compared to the year ago levels as Moscow is in increasingly finding ways to circumvent sanctions and find buyers willing to risk purchasing its crude and refined petroleum products. In April 2024, for example, Russia's oil and gas revenues hit $13.5 billion, which in essence is $1.23 trillion in the Russian ruble. Uh, and it's interesting because this comes from the Russian finance ministry, and it showed this early in May. So we have no reason to believe that these numbers are wrong. The article goes on to say, the Kremlin received nearly double the oil income for the budget than it did in the same month of 2023. The weaker Russian ruble and the higher price of Russia's flagship 
Euros crude amid higher international oil prices contributed to the higher revenues from oil related taxes and from all total oil and gas sales, according to the estimates by Bloomberg. Folks, that is like legit. They're understanding the correlations that exist there. It goes on to say the doubled revenues from oil for Russia highlight the difficulties of Western countries to reduce Putin's income from oil, despite the price gap on Russia's oil and the ramp up of sanctions enforcement in recent months. And let me tell you why this is a very accurate statement. And actually, let me tell you why it's actually working for Putin. If you remember, when the United States of America chose to sanction Russia, Russia actually benefited from it greatly because when that happened, Russia understood the advantage that it had with the ability to sell oil to uh, all of Europe. And of course, in doing so, they were able to dictate their own terms because in most European countries, they have no other source for energy other than Russia when we're talking about oil and when we're talking about gas, natural gas and oil. So here's the thing. Russia gets to dictate the terms that they sell the oil for. And of course, that's exactly what they did. They said, listen, if you want to buy this oil, we'll give it to you. You're going to pay an elevated price. And not only are you going to pay an elevated price, but you're also going to pay for it in rubles. And if you don't want to pay for it in rubles, well, then there's another very specific way you can do it that involves uh, uh, moving through Iran. And of course, by doing that, you're going to pay quadruple, if not more uh, than that. And by the way, let me just tell you how even more complicated that is because of the JCPOA that we had with Iran, because a result of the JCPOA was that Russia now had their hands in the building of Iran's nuclear facility because the United States of America is paying Russia to do it. We're also paying quadruple the price for any type of crude oil that is necessary to complete operations in that region even for our own troops that are in the area, specifically the Persian Gulf and in other places, we are paying an insane amount of money and all it's doing is making Putin richer and it's making Iran richer. Now, why is that such a significant deal? It's a significant deal because the United States is weakening its currency every single day. And as it continues to weaken its currency, you know what it's going to do? It's going to strengthen the position of these intergovernmental organizations like BRICS, who's going to go after the strength of the U.S. dollar and eventually eliminate it as the petrodollar. If that happens, listen, folks, if the United States dollar collapses, we're done. There will be a, a cashless society. There will no longer be anything that is any Anywhere near anything else other than that very scenario. And the book of Revelation, when we read Revelation, Revelation 13, it tells us what's going to end up happening. Now, let me read it for you because uh, I know that many of you are very familiar with the text and uh, we talk about it all the time, but I want to read it to you again because look at the requirement that the Antichrist is going to create in order to be able to buy and sell. It's that critical. Now, look at this. This is verse 16 of Revelation chapter 13, and this is regarding the Antichrist. Christ and what he's going to require people to do. He's going to make people worship him by accepting the mark of the beast. So look what it says. It says in verse 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. So what we learn in Revelation 13 is that if you do not take the mark on your forehead or on your right hand, you're not going to be able to go shopping. How are they going to enforce that? How in the world are they going to keep people from going shopping? Social credit systems like the one that we're looking at. And the enforcement of those social credit systems is going to be based on the ability to remove the dollar or any other uh, uh, physical currency away from uh, people's hands. It's going to all be digital. And when it becomes digital, it will be controlled by the powers that be. They will be able to shut off your ability to buy things. They will be able to raise the prices in certain things in your life while dropping other prices and other things. Like think about this scenario. Um, right now they're doing this. They're doing this in China. They do this in parts of Canada. They're talking about doing it in the United States of America. Guess what, buddy? You've, t you've consumed too much fuel. So from now on, every single time you buy fuel, for every gallon, it will cost three times as much. And if you go through another 30 gallons, then it will cost 10 times as much. And if you uh, choose to continue to go through another 30 gallons, you won't be able to buy fuel at all. 
And they'll be doing that. And eventually what will happen is they'll restrict your ability to buy fuel, which means you can't travel. If you can't travel, you don't have freedom and they'll be able to rule your life. Now imagine them using tools like that and they're doing it right now and they're getting away with it. Imagine using tools like that to bring it into the world of the final Antichrist. Folks, do you know where they're getting to, the point that they're getting to? They're beginning to say you eat too much so you won't be able to buy food after a certain point. That's what they're thinking. Now, they'll, make me, they'll make me starve in China, but you know that's a whole other story. <laughs> but what's happening is this. What's happening is it's going to translate into you haven't taken the mark of the beast, so you will not be able to buy and sell. That's a direction we're going in, folks. That's the world we're about to embark upon, and we need to wake up to recognize what's really happening. Now, I bring all this up because I want you to understand that the Bible warned us that this would take place. This is nothing that should make us fearful. As a matter of fact, I bring it up because as we're aware of the things that are happening, it gives us the ability to stand up for righteousness as the Bible has called us to. It teaches us to prepare our families as we get things ready for uh, you know, a rainy day, as we would call it, right? All of you should be doing things every single day to prep for the things that we know are coming in the future. As a matter of fact, at Calvary Chapel, Signal Hill, we actually have what's called a prepper fellowship where we get together and it's not what you think we're getting together going, gods and guns and here we go, not that kind of thing, but we are getting together and we are helping one another. Those of us that have greater resources, we're giving to those that have limited resources and we're getting together. We do this once a month and we spend great time, a great amount of time in educating people how to do things like gardening, really working out of our way to make sure families have extra food set aside for any things like earthquakes or emergencies, bad weather, have water put aside, understand the surroundings that uh, encompass them and being prepared for it. Why? Because God wants us to be ready. Now, here's the great thing. We'll get raptured soon. I think it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think it's going to happen sooner than later. And when it does, all that stuff you did to prepare when you leave it behind, it'll be used for somebody else. But God is going to be glorified in what we do. And it's time that we learn to leverage all of those things, learn to educate our children, build them up for the future, because God says he's in the future. God is the one that holds the future. God is with us. He is uh, holding us in his hand. He is protecting us. And I want you guys to understand that God sees all things and he knows all things and he promises that he will protect us, his children. So let us be the individuals who continue to fight the good fight as we see these things happening, to be in tune with what's happening in the rest of the world and to be ready for the things that we know are coming because the Bible tells us these things are coming. We can read it a mile away, especially with the changes in the geopolitics, the shifting in the policies of governments, all of the things that are happening. We should be expecting it because the Bible told us to expect it. So get ready because the goodness of God is going to show itself in a new way that is so incredible that every day we live in the moments that we're living right now, we're going to find so much more encouragement. So much more power, so much more grace, because God is getting ready to show up more than he ever has been before. So get ready, folks, and that's why we make you aware of all of these things. God bless you. Keep fighting the good fight, and wait and taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.